All right, folks. So in this video, we're going to take a look at this device, which is called a step attenuator, or in this case, a key press attenuator. Here you can see the model number and the attenuation range of 1 to 90 dB. Um, this says in 1 dB, and I'm not 100% sure if this means in 1 dB increments, because you can do more than 1 dB increments. We'll, we'll talk about this in a second. Um, or this means uh, 1 dB of insertion loss when you use this particular device. Anyhow, being a key press attenuator, what you do is, is that you can adjust the amount of attenuation that you want to use for your test. You can do this in 20 uh, dB increments or any addition of these other values, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 20, 20, and 20. So for example, if I wanted to introduce 45 dB of attenuation into a test that I was doing, I could hit 20 and 20, which would give me 40, and then 1 and 4, which would give me 45 in total. Now we use these attenuators to um, lower the input uh, strength of a signal that's going into a test device like a spectrum analyzer or oscilloscope, for example. You also may want to attenuate a signal going into a radio um, because you don't want to damage that radio if you are generating a signal from a test device like a waveform generator, for example, or if you wanted to just attenuate any signal in general. You can get this device with N connectors, which is what I did, um, or you can get it with SMA connectors. It doesn't matter much. Here you can see in and out. Uh, the other thing is, is that I believe the range for this attenuator is from zero uh, all the way up to 2.5 gigahertz, and it's rated at five watts of usage. That information is not anywhere on this device, so I'm going to go ahead and use a Sharpie to, uh, to add that. In the past, I've done uh, videos using these fixed attenuators, and I'll, I'll link one of them below, and uh, I've had to use Sharpies to write certain things on here because you don't want to make a mistake and damage any of your equipment. But uh, these fixed attenuators are very nice, very handy. Um, but I did need a step attenuator where I can adjust the attenuation um, by using either these push buttons or sometimes they'll have a knob on the side that you can that you can turn. Anyhow, let's take a quick look at where I got this from Amazon and then you can get some more information there on this particular device. In this video, we are going to measure the attenuation of this using this Nano VNA SAA2. Um, I believe this device can test up to three gigahertz, which makes it adequate for this particular test. And then at the end of the video, we are going to crack this thing open and see what the guts look like. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so here is the Amazon site uh, where I got the attenuator. And you can see it's an adjustable key press attenuator, step adjustable RF attenuator. Here it says five watts, but there are some more specifications here. Powers five watts, operating frequency DC, which is zero hertz, to 2.5 gigahertz connector N. And then it has, uh, here's some interesting, interesting information, insertion loss less than or equal to three dB, so we'll measure the insertion loss. And standing wave ratio uh, less than or equal to 1.4 SWR. So I found that to be a little bit surprising, but uh, maybe I shouldn't be. There's also some other pictures of this device here if you wanted to get uh, a closer look. You can see that it is commonly bought with a tiny SA or with a nano VNA. Uh, the use of attenuation with these devices is, is very, very typical. Uh, down here, some more information around the product description. Uh, it shows that it does have a 50 ohm impedance. Okay, and here's the software that we're going to use, Nano VNA Saver. And I have the calibration window set up, and you can see that we've applied a calibration of 5,010 data points. We've done short open load through and isolation calibrations. If you're interested in how to do this, I would encourage you to check out my Nano VNA playlist, which will be linked in the description below. Also in the upper left-hand corner of the main window, you can see the sweep control. And in there, we've started the sweep at 50 kilohertz to 2,500 megahertz or 2.5 gigahertz. We've done 10 sweep segments and we will get a data point about every 500 kilohertz. So let's go ahead and set up the attenuation um, step attenuator in line and see what we get. Okay. 
Okay, so what we have here is Nano VNA Saver before the sweep. And you can take a look. We have five markers spread about 500 megahertz apart. And marker one, we have an S21 gain of 0 0.004 dB, um, which is very, very small. For marker two, it is negative 0 0.049 dB, again, very small. Um, our marker three is 0 0.010, marker four is 0 0.025, and marker five is 0 0.007 dB. Now, this line is not exactly flat, and that is because we are likely getting some form of reactant somewhere along the line. Uh, I don't know if it was... Uh, I'm not going to call it problematic. That's pretty good measurements. Uh, what we're going to do now is we are going to set this sweep as a reference, and then we are going to run a sweep of the of the device without any attenuation buttons selected and see what we get. Okay, we've run the sweep with the device in line, and this probably looks worse than it really is. For one reason, this scale is uh, is very small, making it making this gap look really big. Now, if you recall, when we looked at the device uh, product description, it said the insertion loss was less than 3.5 dB. Um, and we can see that here with the most uh, that we see is marker number five at negative 2.321. Uh, marker 4 is negative 1.8, marker 3 is negative 1.550, marker 2 is negative 1.278. And marker one is negative 0.796. So what you can see is, is that as we go up in frequency, you see more insertion loss, which is not atypical. So one of the things I'm going to say is, is that most of the work that I do is for amateur radio, and I will likely never use this device above 500 megahertz. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, I don't know. Um, this doesn't seem to be that big of an issue to me. Uh, one of the things I can do is I could also uh, attempt to normalize this as part of the through calibration uh, to erase this insertion loss, and then we would get any real loss when we go ahead and set attenuation levels with the buttons. So let's go ahead and attempt that now. All right, so it looks like we have some good news. I was able to go ahead and recalibrate the Nano VNA, and I did it with the step attenuator in line th for the through calibration. And then you can see for marker one at 500 megahertz, we have 0, 0.000 dB insertion loss, which is fantastic. Uh, for marker number two, we have negative 0 0.052 at one gigahertz. Uh, marker three, which is 1.5 gigahertz, we have negative 0 0.015. Marker four at two gigahertz is 0 0.006 dB. Uh, negative 0 0.006 dB, and then marker 5 is uh, at 25 or 2.5 gigahertz, and it is negative 0 0.003 dB. So we're really happy with these. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this as the current reference, and then I am going to push the, I don't know which one we want to do. Let's do... Um, 5 dB of attenuation. So I push the 1 and the 4 buttons on the step attenuator, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run that sweep now. Well, that's not what I expected. What we should have gotten is about 5 dB of, of attenuation or negative 5 dB on the graph, and we didn't get that. So let me go ahead and change this uh, and use a different combination of buttons, and we'll run another sweep. So here's what I had, the one and the four pressed. Let's go ahead and just press the eight and see what happens. Something like this is more what I would expect. So when we take a look at it, uh, marker one is negative 908, marker two is negative one eight, negative 9.18, marker three is negative 9.05, marker four is negative 9.22, marker five is negative 9.58. I wonder if it has something to do with pushing the buttons simultaneously, which is what you're supposed to be able to do, or if the one or the four button has something going on with it. Let's run another sweep. This time we have the one and the eight pressed. Let's see what happens. 
Okay, so with the 8 and the 1 pressed, we should have 9 dB of attenuation. And our S21 gain is anywhere from marker 1 at negative 10.67 all the way up to marker 5 at negative 11.29. Um, and that is with the 8 and the 1. I'm wondering if it is the 4 that is problematic. Let's run a quick test. So 8, 1, and 4 should be around 13 dB of attenuation. And we have negative 14.6 at marker 1. And then we have negative 15.714 at marker 5. We don't have that uh, anomaly that we had earlier. I'm going to do another sweep off camera of the one and the four, see what happens. If it looks good, then I'm going to go ahead and do a sweep with all of the buttons pressed and I'll come back for that. So we're running a sweep with all of the buttons pressed. Um, we're going to see how that happened. The one and the four ran without issue. So this is what I'm concerned about. This is with all of the buttons pressed. And these results are all over the place. I got this because I need to go up to about 90 dB of attenuation. And this looks like it's going to be a problem for me. I still want to take this thing open, uh, open it up and see what's inside, take a look. So we'll go ahead and do that. But uh, I don't think I'm going to be inclined to go ahead and keep using this device. One final sweep with all of the buttons pressed but one. What I noticed is if I press them all, that adds up to 91, and this says 1 to 90 dB. So let's just try a 90 uh, dB sweep and see what happens. And again, the results are all over the place. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be comfortable using this moving forward, but let's go ahead and crack it open and see what's inside. Well, holy smokes, what is all that? It just looks like a series of uh, resistors in there, like a resistor network or something. Um, they get activated or not when you push these buttons. I don't want to take this apart any further. I mean, I guess I could, but uh, I don't want to out of fear. I wouldn't be able to get it back together. Like, if I take these screws out, I think that the solder to the center pin might still be an issue and I'd have to desolder that to get this board out. So um, that's really gonna be it. Now, you need to decide if this is right for you or not, if the measurements are close enough or it's something that you wanna look at. Based off what we saw with uh, the setting on 90 dB, this isn't gonna work for me. Um, I can live with some of the variants that we have in the higher frequencies, but um, I don't think I'm gonna go ahead and keep this one. Anyhow, thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks.